Sailing and exploring the Tuamoto Atolls in the Pacific Ocean is a dream come true. How can blue water be so mesmerizing? As we were heading north, we had a hard 500 nautical mile sail, beating against the wind up to Fatuiva, the most remote of the French Polynesian Marquesas Islands. We dropped our hook in a bay pinned down as one of the most spectacular anchorages worldwide. We skinny dipped in the lush green islands waterfalls, spent time watching and chatting with local craftsmen, enjoyed fresh pamplemousse, traded for some of our old ropes. And today it is time to continue our journey, again passing by spectacular mountain ridges and ravines. Bay of Virgins in Hanavave, Hanavave, whatever. So, yeah, 60 meters anchor chain was pulled out today by me. Oh, my. Her hand, as always. <laughs> Good fitness program. Yeah, well, so now we are heading for uh, Tagawe. It's just 40 miles around the corner. We Tagawe to Tawata. Tawata. Now we are heading to Tawata. Just 40 miles here around the corner. We're gonna motor, uh, and then when uh, and then behind the island, we're gonna put the sails on because it's pretty gusty down here. We're a little bit afraid of ripping our sails here. Yeah. yeah, it's a belly here, and the wind is coming from the east. So, and this is uh, like a like a funnel there in the anchorage so it was blowing over 40 knots every every day in gusts and you have to secure everything on deck otherwise just gone in the ocean we lost quite a lot of stuff huh, that we got back like, our uh, cushion <laughs> our dinghy went flying a little bit <laughs> yeah of course you come over also And our fridge finally left us. So after not working anymore onto 20 volts, I put it on to uh, on 12 volts. I put it on to 20 volts, and then it worked for a half a day. And now it shows error. So no more fridge, huh? Bye bye fridge. Which is why we headed for Hiva Oa instead. According to Polynesian legends, Hiva Oa was one of the first islands in the Marquesas to be settled, although being one of the youngest in the island chain. The island is located 1,400 kilometers northeast of Tahiti and is sometimes described as a seahorse whose head faces the setting sun. The island measures 40 by 10 kilometers, while the 1,190 meters high peak Temetiu crowns the ridge of the mountains above picturesque valleys and bays separated by dorsal spines and ridges. We dropped our hook framed in a theater of mountains in Tahoku Bay, providing us a moderately safe anchorage due to the uncomfortable incoming swell. <laughs>
So we are in uh, Atuona, just uh, in uh, Hiva Oa. Um, sailed here yesterday from uh, Fatu Hiva and uh, we are making our way from the anchorage to the main town, which is actually quite a walk and it's pretty hot. And uh, But you can't really land your dinghy here. When you look at, <coughs> at the swell coming in here into this bay, uh, you're just gonna wreck your dinghy probably. And we're actually on the search for somebody who knows the number of the refrigerator man here on the island because our fridge uh, is not working anymore and the other one is also doing funny stuff. And so we're taking the long walk, hopefully also to find some eggs maybe in the supermarket here and just check out uh, the main town of uh, on Hiva Oa a little bit and I must say pretty cool scenery here the clouds hovering above the mountain over there over here you can see swell long swell coming into the bay yeah what is this birds of paradise It's our first Christmas tree that we see. wie so ein halber Moai, ne? After being unsuccessful finding internet anywhere, not even at the town hall, to be able to find a telephone number of someone who could repair fridge compressors in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, we strolled around Atuona a bit more. The French Impressionist painter Paul Gauguin came to Hiva Oa in 1901 in search of savage wildness and primitive cultures whose bodily remains now rest on the Calvary Cemetery behind the Atuona village, the administrative center for the southern Marquesas. Petals from the lightly smelling old frangipani trees shower down on his grave and a statue of Oviri, the savage, stands at the head of the tombstone. A few graves away, from Gauguin's tombstone you find the final resting place of the famous Belgian singer Jacques Brel, who lived in Atuona from 1975 to 1978 and whose grave is often decorated with flowers. Named an homme de voile, he also sailed to the Marquesas like us from France. In his last song Les Marquises, on the 1977 album, the beauty of the Pacific island paradise contrasts dramatically with his decline dying at the young age of 49 through a cancerous tumor. 
he sings of laughter in the people's hearts. Coconut palm trees writing love songs, pirogues coming and going while the sea tears itself apart. People talking of death as you talk about a fruit, and time coming to a standstill at the Marquesas where whining is inappropriate. Ah, <laughs> these bloody sailors sailing around in the world looking at all these nice places and putting up their hammock in the bays, chilling, having a cocktail or maybe a coconut to drink. Well, I can tell you that's not what boat like is like. So today we have a day where we have to take care of the boat again. Uh, as there is always something to fix, the to-do list actually is, actually is never blank, to be honest. And sometimes we have bigger projects, sometimes we have smaller projects from uh, sewing our sails, from hard sails, uh, where we have little rips, seams have come loose, to two broken fridges at the moment that we have to take care of, which is quite tricky. Um, as um, yeah, we are still in the Pacific Ocean, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and there is uh, often no one around, or it's really hard to find. Um, and uh, adding to that, you have all the technical talk that you do in the telephone booth in French, if you're lucky enough uh, to understand them. Um, they don't speak too quick. Yeah, and today uh, we actually have our superstructure day again. Um, we are giving uh, Tula a new uh, coat of varnish. Um, she looked pretty bad, I must say, and it's really astonishing. I'm just going to show you right now what our um, superstructure um, looked like when we left Germany and what it looks like now, because it actually has lost a lot of its color. So, um, we have pretty sanded everything. because it's just too hot and we are one month too late with varnishing good thing is that the varnish is going to leak into the little cracks hopefully uh, to um, yeah seal this up the windows are always a little bit of an issue um, because small cracks the wood works and sometimes small cracks form that's what you always have to check for uh, now we come to the front and uh, here you can see the result so you can see it very clearly this is what it looked like we had the horn on here like a little horn for wind and when we left germany here cracked a little bit as well oh not so good yeah and well this is what it looks like after one and a half years in the tropics so she's a good boat but uh, i must say these wooden bows just don't belong here in the tropics um, because they uh, suffer quite a bit and um, yeah I um, think if we would do this again I think we would rather go for a boat with a plastic uh, superstructure um, where you have more time to chill in your hammock <laughs> not do your woodwork even though I must admit every time we do the job again she just looks so pretty so hopefully hopefully the clouds stay where they are don't want any rain here when the varnish uh, dries in the early evening hours so after cleaning everything with acetone um, the superstructure looks pretty good again hmm? here we go still see here it's a good part to see the difference between tropics and non-tropics again pretty good finish here you can see some parts that we will have to redo in keel um, there's another small crack where you can see where water has leaked in a bit but otherwise let's see looks pretty good
So if you're interested in seeing how we redo our superstructure, revarnish it, what materials we use, um, click on the video that you can see blended in. Um, there's a whole explanation video that Ilya did um, for seeing how we deal with uh, sailing with a wooden boat in uh, warmer tropical waters. So we rented a scooter today. Finally, 125 cc. It's like a, it's like a real motorcycle. Little bit. And we will need it probably. Yeah? And we will probably need it to go uphill, yeah. So see you later, Tula. We followed the road built on Tipuna Plateau, 440 meters above the sea, connecting the airport and other villages with Atuona. Except for a few cars passing by, there was no one but us. We enjoyed making a few scenic stops, listening to the sounds of the forest and gazing at trees that reminded us of ones found in Africa's Serengeti. The views from the top were spectacular. Er hat auch so Honig, glaube ich, hinten, Elia. 200 Meter den Berg runter. Ja. Nee, meinst du nicht? <laughs> Not a Schwalbe. But still good. Having reached the top, Elia's level of joy reached its maximum when it was time for a mountain scooter slalom. We were heading for the Puamau Valley, 48 kilometers from Matuona. It is said Gauguin's descendants still live there.
So we've made it to a place uh, uh, on the other side, on the north easterly side of Hiva Oa. Um, it's something called, uh, if I remember right, Huo or something like that. Um, was quite an adventure with the moped as some of the roads uh, yeah, were gravel roads and there were a lot of rocks that fall, fell down. But now we're back, as you can see here next to me with the banana in this lush green valley and it's really, really pretty. And um, here we have a tiki site with the largest tikis um, ever formed on the Marquesas. Um, in our other episode we talked about um, a giant tiki that was set up in the bay um, of Taioe in uh, Nukuhiva, um, but that was not uh, naturally made, um, but made years later. And these are um, all stone tikis. So let's go and check them out in this really, really green paradise again. Oh, juicy, nice. Oh, they're big, Ilya, huh? Huge. Wow. Biggest tiggies in the in French Polynesia, I've heard. The oldest one we saw in Ua, Ua Hukahana Bay. That's the, old, the oldest ones. So this uh, area in earlier days I would never have been allowed to enter as this is a sacred area. There's a lot of uh, basalt rocks around here so it's um, Mei or Mei. Um, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it and um, it's a place um, that only certain people were allowed to enter um, depending on the mana that they were born with. The more mana that you had, uh, the higher your social status was and uh, these tikis, they uh, marked certain areas uh, that only, for example, higher priests were allowed to enter. It's a lovely site to visit, apart from the number of nonos, the sandflies, which are obnoxious pests stinging you all over within minutes, despite strong insect repellent. It feels like they particularly favor visitors, white visitors, as I didn't see many locals with backs or legs covered in stings like mine. Seems like somebody was bored here because I think these are, these are shot holes. <laughs> We made one last stop in the valley of Hanayapa and then headed back to Tula. Hiva Oa is one of the Marquesas Islands that is often said not to be that pretty and worth stopping, if you could dare saying that. While the southern part near our anchorage was rather dry, almost desert-like, we were super surprised by its diverse landscapes, even shivering in the cool wind we felt on the mountainous plateaus and lush green northerly side with its neatly arranged villages and gardens. Christmas tree transport, Hivoa style. <laughs> Just go in the woods and go and chop one. For Christmas, we make a hop over to our last Marquesian island to visit, the one with the only white sandy beaches in the Marquesas, Tawata. Like many of the other French Polynesian islands in the Pacific, this one pours on a charm of its own type. On our website you can find more information of our travels and how you can support our filming activities if you enjoy being part of our adventures behind the screen or just want to buy us a cold beer. At this point we'd like to thank some, for us very important people, for supporting us on our sailing journey. And most importantly, our friends and families for supporting us in various ways with whatever our newest, sometimes a bit daring plans are. Thank you Karin and Philip, Julian and Gautier, Laura and Friedrich, Torben and Christine, 
Mama und Papa.